Is this thing on? All right, it seems to be. This is audio recording one. Normally I'm too busy to record anything like this, but today is different. You see, I've decided to enter the original Mecha Contest, or OMC, and I want to document the process. I'm Ryland Mercer, or Rye. I run Mercer Mechanics here in Neo City 11. My mech is inspired by years of rollerblading through the chaos of downtown alleyways and realizing the potential for use with personal transportation. Let's see what it takes to keep up with the best of the best as an independent contractor. Hopefully these recordings will be inspiring to anyone else out there who has had to scrape together success through sheer hard work and determination. I don't expect to beat companies like Aramecha Industries or Aegis Mechatronics, but I might as well try. Welcome to Project Echo. First, we have to go shopping. Thankfully, as a business owner with machinery, I already own a number of parts from past projects that I can reuse for this. You'd be surprised just how many parts you can find floating around in the market that are of military quality and how cheap you can get them. The hardest part for me is obtaining a quality chassis that can fit a pilot, but will make something work. I have a stock of old fast draft machining purchases that will simplify limb designs, but the terrible FDM quality will require cleanup. Duplicate parts like these can be clamped together and worked in bulk, which saves a lot of time. Each joint has two washers and uses standard hardware to save on cost. With the joints ready, I realized I needed more limb frames and salvaged those from some spare parts. I used old vehicle parts for an easy starting point with the hips and back. A surface grinder helps to make parts flush. Just make sure to use enough coolant. An existing channel was widened in the pelvis, which made for easy installation of some engine parts. It always seems easier to cut corners, but I recommend going for strength and quality if you don't want headaches later. You also don't need fancy tools for accuracy. A long straight edge works great in a pinch. Of course, if you do have fancy tools, definitely take advantage of being able to align parts properly. I want the pelvis and torso to be separate parts. I'm using a simple socket for now to see how it holds up. We can always revisit this later if necessary, and we very likely will. After getting key features designed, I like to work from the bottom up to make the mech stand as one unit. Growing up in Neo City 11, I spent most of my time rollerblading through crowded alleys and busy streets. It taught me about speed and agility. As a kid, I tried attaching model rockets to my skates to go faster. It ended with a spectacular crash into a dumpster. That experience taught me the importance of control and precision. Now I'm applying those lessons to the mech's rollerblade design. Drawing on years of experience, these mech-sized rollerblades should make the design more efficient in navigating tight environments. Unlike the bulky, slow-moving giants, this design can maneuver quickly and easily through narrow spaces. This makes it perfect for city missions. If I use rockets for acceleration, that means I don't need to fit larger engines or motors into the design. It keeps the unit lightweight and agile. But I digress, as that will need to be built much later. Asymmetrical hinges allow the knees to fold compactly for tight maneuvering, but take a bit of machining to fit the frame parts I've picked out.
Since the hinges were already polished, the legs snapped together easily. A ball socket joint on the ankle provides the simplest connection with the most flexibility and motion. I realized the pelvis had an interesting problem. The angle of the hip joint makes the feet point inward. This can be easily fixed with a ball joint, but I prefer a sturdier connection in the hips, so I changed the attachment angle. The new bushing is from Fast Draft Machining, which sometimes feels like cheating, but the precision in angles is hard to pass up, and this mech needs precision. Besides, anyone can tell you that the company has terrible quality control of their parts, which requires manual cleanup. A larger version of the knee and elbow joints allows for a strong connection in the hips. And just like that, ambulation. There's no way I'm not putting rockets on this thing, but I need space for the hardware, so I'll need to rip apart the truck frame on the back of the mech. I managed to find an all-in-one nuclear pack on the market for portable fusion energy that is perfect for powering thrusters. The special polymer casing used to keep radiation contained is terrible to weld or glue to, so I modified the existing screw holes to allow through bolts. I still needed a connecting mount in the center of the pack, so old school rivets were fused into the parts. This probably won't cause problems. The rest of the back housing was filled with very critical parts too complex to describe here. After sealing up the rear, I started integrating the front sensors and entry hatch for the pilot. Echo will mostly be unarmored or lightly armored, but the pre-made door already came with blast shielding, which I'm sure the pilot will appreciate. The prototype holder for a jetpack was attached to the fusion module, but the thrusters will have to be integrated later. One last pair of mirrored fast draft machining parts were ordered for the shoulders. I got them for some bold ideas I had, but the quality is so terrible I ended up scrapping half of its usage and I won't be ordering from FDM for the rest of this project. I wanted to try magnetic latching, but they didn't work well and a single bolt did the job much better. They also caused unnecessary interference with the surrounding parts. They're already on the mech, so I decided to use them for quick alignment to get the bolt in easily. The arms were assembled similarly to the legs. All of the parts were ready, so the final assembly was fast. With a bit of planning and attention to detail, it can be very rewarding to create an original design. Listen, I'm not a public speaker, so I'm not great with words, but the point I'm trying to make is that you can get very far in a design by taking inspiration and running wild with it. I hope this helps someone out there. That's all from me, Rye at Urser Mechanics. Take care. Oh, and before I forget, Thank you to everyone who has been supporting my company. It means a lot to me. End recording one. End. Stop. How in the world do you stop?